we would be looking at redundancy packages if it had to go that way, but we would be fighting to keep it open. Um, it seems like it's still valued and still needed. Um, so we will be fighting uh, to keep that open. So if I do get on the council, I will be fighting with you to keep that open. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, we've got two more questions. I've got well, my question is directed mainly to uh, education resources in Haringey. Um, I'm particularly concerned that uh, I know there are teaching professionals in here, so I'm not going to try and speak for them. Um, as everybody knows, Haringey has more than its fair share of problems uh, with housing, etc., transient population, etc. And that comes into the school system. That means there's an added weight put on the teaching staff. Despite all that, in recent years, and particularly in the last year, Harry Gay's had exemplary uh, achievements in education right across the board. And that is despite the best efforts of some people, especially our outgoing council, who likes to claim all the credit but is busy selling off all our resources at the same time, including the only permanent building for a teacher's centre in Haringey. Now, that has not been replaced. That houses teachers' development, that means ongoing development, that means learning about autistic children, children with special needs of all kinds, psychiatric courses in psychology, etc. That means they're able to deal with children, not just their education, but their pastoral care, which is so important. People need to know, parents need to know, that governors are experiencing for the first time in this borough, in I think, the f I call it the first year of secondary education, I think it's year seven in modern terms. Can you, can you for the question? first time, uh, they're experiencing permanent exclusions of first year secondary school children. That's what we're up against, and yet the ad admin staff with you and, and the teaching staff and, and people are, are, have nowhere to work from. So uh, next Question, week, please. this week they're on third. All right, just this one last point, I promise. Question. The, this week they're on the third floor of a, a temporary building in New River Park, New River House. Next month they've been told they're going to the seventh floor of New River House. Question. We please. don't know where. Well, I want to know where they're going after that. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> Oh, yeah, thanks for your um, question. As, as I've mentioned earlier, it's, um, I mean, we wouldn't have uh, put through the cuts to youth services. Um, it's vitally important. Um, you know, from a young age, you know, uh, you know children's learning and development start from um, their classes. So, I mean, I was surprised to hear um, the free school meals that label said that they was going to give to primary schools, we definitely support something like that. We support things that would um, benefit our society. We're not just here to block things, we're here to support things that we feel are good, and that will be definitely one thing that's good. We need to change our uh, roads and streets. We need to have um, a community and society again. We need to have youth centres again, um, breakfast clubs, after school clubs. I, I grew up on those kind of things, and they're just not there for the young people anymore. So uh, it's a shame to hear that year seven uh, children are being excluded permanently. But I mean, by that age, which is 11 years old already, they would have been, um, uh, they would have been far behind uh, children in, in wealthier boroughs. So that's something that we have to, uh, and I know there's challenges in this borough because we're not as wealthy as a Richmond or somewhere else, but we have to really take this seriously. And I think we need to come across party. This is not a tribal uh, political point scoring issue. This is an issue of our children and posterity and what's going to happen. And the cuts are not working and they are having a major, major detrimental effect to our young people. So if I get on the council, it will be working with Labour and the Lib Zems to say, look, this is having a detrimental effect on us. We've had a huge spike in crime recently. Um, there is a lot going on in our society and we need to come together um, with the teachers, um, w with parents, to find a, a, a good solution for our young people. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, well, it seems uh, it's like damned if you do and damned if you don't, really, when it comes to schools and teachers and teaching staff in particular. Um, and I've got uh, a vested interest in the sense that my partner worked in a school for many or in many schools um, until recently. And, and unfortunately, although she very much liked the job, she felt that she wasn't given the tools to do the job, the long hours, the low pay, the little gratitude. Uh, in the end, she couldn't stand it um, and she left. Uh, my son is now on the brink of training to be a teacher. He's looking forward to it. But if he, even, but if he gets a job, then there's a question of where he's going to live. So I think all of these issues come into it. It's low pay, it's lack of resources, it's an absence of affordable housing, all the issues that we've discussed here this evening. And I think the most corrosive element of that is the cuts and the continue underfunding. That's why uh, in our leaflet and our commitment, we say quite clearly that we oppose cuts, uh, all cuts to local schools, and we're calling to bring Haringey's academies back into council control. It's absolutely essential that there's some stability and that the resources are well funded as well. Um, I would say that the best or the most valuable resource that we have as a society, in a sense, is, is our youth, because they do represent our future. Uh, and we should value that rather than condemn that. Relation to the exclusions, it's, it's, a, it's a scandal. And this was borne out and, and testified many times by my partner. She would make the point that children are regularly excluded, sometimes on flimsy reasons. And, and most of those children, or a disproportionate uh, uh, amount of those children, are from BAME uh, backgrounds as well. And one of the reasons is this... Sufficient, there's just insufficient time in the school day, so we need more resources. Thank you. My daughter trained as a teacher and decided at that time that um, uh, she didn't want to become a teacher, but she married someone who did become a teacher who is, um, <coughs> spends a lot of his time. Um, dealing with the administration and the, uh, the process, of your, if you like, of being a teacher rather than actually teaching. Um, interesting that the questioner uh, said that um, uh, the schools in Haringey um, are doing quite well at the moment. In fact, they're doing very well. Uh, but I think that's more to do with the teachers themselves and the people who work in the, in the schools um, rather than the council, um, and yet Claire Cover will take and has taken the, the credit and says um, many, many times we've got some very good schools in Harrogate, and we have, but I don't think um, that has anything to do with, um, or the, the, the reason that the schools are good in Harrogate is because the, the, the uh, schools and the head teachers employ good staff. Um, we would... Um, we would um, make sure that the schools are well supported by the council um, and we would make sure that the teachers are well supported by the council. Thank you. So um, I, think, I think it's a really important question because I, I, mean, I, I went to a Haringey school and um, it was a very different time and um, I think that, that, that there has to be an understanding though is that actually some of the things that teachers are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, and Keith, Keith spoke about the kind of support issues that, you know, children and young people are coming in with, is actually because, you know, families are on the, on the receiving end of the brunt of austerity and actually on a daily basis teachers are picking that up you know if, 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 if a child is in insecure temporary emergency accommodation and that has been um, going on for, for months or years then actually when they come into school um, the, the, you know um, the next day they're, they're actually going to feel the impact of that you know it, you know insecure accommodation um, impacts on children's health it impacts on their education um, 
I, I, I do agree that actually what um, what's what's what you know the, the, the achievement of schools should be credited to the teachers but at the same time I don't want to legitimize a debate which suggests that local authorities are in a sense preventing schools from doing well because that feeds into the academization argument I don't believe that there is a fundamental breakdown of a relationship between a school and a local authority which would justify it going um, out into the academization process but at the same time I don't think that we should um, be saying that everything that um, all, all the things that have been achieved in schools are directly because of our political leadership if we want to say that then we should deliver political leadership and we should challenge academisation and we should challenge actually a lot of what's going on in not not just outsourcing within the councils, but the outsourcing of public service. I mean, I've sat on a governing body and I've seen payrolls going out but being outsourced. I've seen HR services being outsourced and that's what we need to actually be talking about as well. Okay, final question, Joy. Um, I just want to bring something a few questions. Um, one relating to the HDV, which I was opposed to and effective in. With all the flats, will new places, as much as they will be opposed, hopefully by all you guys who get in, will there be an assurity that to go with all these new builds, that there'll be an increase in GPs, nurseries, and school places? Um, as for the services, the care services that these people do in, bringing them back in-house and putting the jobs for the local people, there may be, um, will there be a possibility of training people who are in the borough who are not qualified for the job but will be trained to the standards by the council to give either the youth or mature candidates um, part-time flexible hours and jobs within that industry or permanent positions to then alleviate stuff being outsourced on any level. Um, that's, that's and one more point to go with school dinners if the PTA parents can show that in and get rid of the contractors like it used to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, uh, M&A, Joel, and Okay, well, you'll have to remind me if I forget anything, because that was a long list. But um, bro broadly, uh, <laughs> broadly um, I agree with the points that you've made, that obviously if there's more housing provision for people, then the services have to match that. Uh, that's uh, the essential services of health and education and I also think you raise a, a crucial question of training for young people and I have to declare a vested interest because I've got one of them living at home uh, and I think that we should look particularly um, uh, specifically at training for uh, young people that live in the borough so my son's doing a course in carpentry uh, but he's doing a course I don't want him to when he gets to the end of that course find that he hasn't got a job you know, there should be opportunities for them and I'm sure that there's room for the council to help in ensuring that there are opportunities. We need builders, we need carpenters, we need plumbers, we need electricians. We'll need them to build these new flats and new houses that I'm sure the council will uh, look forward to building. So, yes, in answer to your question, I agree with all of those issues, um, especially on the question of health provision as well. Uh, that, that needs to be radically improved in the, uh, um, in, in the borough. Uh, and over the last period, the, the Tory government has slashed the budgets going to local GPs. So whilst it is a local issue, it's also a national issue, and we should make, for, make sure that we fight not just to get rid of this government, but for more resources for GPs and for the health service in general, so that, um, it, it, so that those resources can be concentrated and delivered where they're so uh, desperately needed. 
I think I think again I, I can't disagree. All all of the issues you raise are really important because also part of what's what, what the council has a responsibility to deliver is is growth actually and, and you know there there are these big debates now going on in London of, of, of what is good growth and what what, what leads to um, improvements in the local economy. And actually I think for Haringey, um, interestingly um, we, we, you know, not uh, so when we hear about regeneration projects, we hear about um, the jobs that it's going to bring, but at the same time, you know, there, there is always an emphasis towards service industries and things like that, which aren't necessarily what everybody wants <coughs> to do, and then they don't deliver the, the kind of numbers of jobs. And yes, building is important as well, but they're generally jobs that, you know, c come and go. What we want is, is kind of a level of permanence, and I'd like to see the return of light in industry to Haringey actually you know and I think that's where you can actually start making some some kind of big improvements to, um, to, to, to to prospects and also the quality of training that that is delivered but but at the same time it's all well and good to to to, to, to make sure that young people you know get, get 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 onto training programs but if there's nothing really on offer for them at, at, at the end of it then it's actually quite quite difficult and I think that's that that's, that's what we, we, we no, really need to focus on. It's not just for the youth, it's for the mature people. Absolutely, but yeah. But also they need to be assured that they're getting trained by you yeah. to yeah. your standard and yeah. then you give them that job. Yeah, Absolutely, I completely agree with that. Abby, I completely agree broadly with all of your points as well. Um, I think one of the major things with uh, HDB as well was who were the jobs going to, and it didn't seem like there was going to be much provision for the local people to get involved in any of those jobs. In fact, some people were precluded from that. So, um, And we're also for refurbishment more than regeneration, which means knocking down the environmental impact amongst everything else is horrendous. Um, and if we did have some people outsourced to, you know, um, repaint somewhere or deal with damp or deal with windows and that was local jobs and it was trained by us, that would be great for local people. And as you said, it's not just for the youth, it's for people who maybe um, have a family and, and can't do full-time work and want to work flexible time and flexible hours. I think that should be um, provided as well. So that, that's quite a good idea. Um, was there anything else you mentioned? I'll quickly forget it. No? School dinners. Oh, school dinners. Yeah, as I said, I supported that uh, that Labour thing of um, free school dinners. Um, it's not free school dinners. No, no, sorry, Joy. Just get rid of the contractors and let the parents take over. Okay. Okay, maybe that's an idea that we can maybe <laughs> speak about another time. <laughs> speak about later. Okay, thank you. I don't disagree with anything uh, that's been said by the other three. Um, it, it is when it does come to rebuilding, and we are talking about the HDB earlier on, um, sometimes a private company or a uh, privatised um, building company will um, think, yes, I can build X amount of flat houses, X amount of flats, um, but don't take into consideration the fact that there might be a lot more people living in that area who will need, need a lot more things like GP services. Um, and I think it's the role of the council to make sure that, that when these um, uh, schemes are being envisaged, that they do take into account all the extras that are needed in the area, transport links and that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, as I said, I agree with... Uh, virtually everything that was said earlier on um, on this question um, but it's it's a very wide uh, your, your question encompasses a very wide thing uh, things like apprenticeships um, I've heard recently that the uh, lots of private companies are saying yes 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 we'll have a, apprenticeships um, and they take the money from the government and then actually what they're doing is using that money to pay a minimum wage to people who aren't really having an apprenticeship. They're just being used um, in a way that the, com the company itself thinks is um, uh, a good way of saving money for the company and getting people to work the minimum wage. So there's, there's a lot of things going on uh, that I think the council can um, uh, uh, in influence 
um, when it comes to uh, what's going on, regeneration, that sort of thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I'd like to thank all the... We haven't quite finished yet, but we've finished the questions. And I'd like to thank all the candidates for being so brief. I think I know from personal experience the hardest thing is to answer a question briefly, and I think they did really well and were very disciplined to time, so thank you very much. Um, they're going to come back and give a three-minute summing up about why you should vote for their party in the local council.